I was asked during the break, what are the different types of coal, coal uh, manufacturing places, or burn, what, what are the kinds of fly ash is produced. So I said that, what is this? What I said that different types of coals have different <coughs> fly ash compositions and things like that, okay? So, before starting, because we had all gone through a lot of scientific things, let's spend 30 seconds in this. Sing with me. Metals, ceramics, polymers are the biggest charmers. Add to them composites. <coughs> what else then they are to it to choose from? Oh, 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 come on. Metals, ceramics, polymers. Sing with me. Metals, ceramics, polymers are the biggest charmers. Add to them composites. What else then they are to it to choose from? Oh, oh, come on. Metal, ceramics, polymers, and there it goes on with ceramics and things like that. So those ceramics contain fly ash, cover the ceramics part, okay, in, in this again lecture. These are all happen to be my composition given by Devi Saraswati. She, she gives me everything, okay. All right. Fly ash recycling, the next one. We'll go a bit quickly through this because these are very broad things. <coughs> this is typical diagram of a coal fire thermal power station. Details are given in the next slide. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up to twenty seven. One is the cooling tower. Then two is a cooling water pump, all these things there. And then you actually have the 26, 27 induced drought fan, the flue gas tank. So this is how all the things work there. I'm not a specialist of coal power station, but this is what we all need to know. All right? And then because there are several questions asked me asked me about the coal power stations, I thought I'm happy that I included this slide. Okay. And again this slide is this included in that book chapter which Sarah Chalaki and myself, all right, so the chapter one in the Nova book. So the coal power stations have lots of things, cooling tower, cooling water pump, then condensate pump surface, huge area, huge areas and each one of them actually has the Thing there you have bottom ash, hopper, and the fly ash actually gets up through the top. The bottom ash slides down. <coughs> if we take a look at the particle size and distribution of the fly ash, particle size in by electrostatic precipitator, I think one of you came and asked me what is the particle size and yet it gives fly ash a very fine particle and irregular spherical shape and it can be hollow or solid. So if it's hollow it's called xenosphere, if it's solid it's called particle. Okay. Also one of you friends you asked me what are the different types of coals that are used in, in coal, coal power furnaces, okay, coal, coal power stations. So there are anthracite, bituminous, subbituminous, and lignite. So these are the different types of coals, and depending on which one is available. So it's like whatever is available, people have to use them. So there are different applications. The particle size distribution of bituminous fly ash coal, bituminous coal fly ash. If you have a coal fly ash from particle size distribution, similar to that of a slate, less than 0 0.075 millimeter, that means about 75 microns of which can go through number 200 sieve, because often 
receive some numbers and it one receives. So, that can actually use go through the 75 micron particles. So, less than that. We had done some experiments. So, Agma Zeni, he is now doctorate, Dr. Agma Zeni, he came from Indonesia, took PhD with me. Uh, he first, actually not with me, he joined chemistry, school of chemistry to do PhD, but after some time, some or other, he did not like that. So, then he found out some or other, he had came to know about me in, in school, and then he came with it international conference given to him and then he wanted to transfer it transfer to me and what I found was very good he was actually a chemical engineer based based in Indonesia so he was a he had a engineering experience worked in so he had a lot of inbuilt thing there and as I mentioned that we were, when we were talk, talking about those models mechanical properties so I said that in one of the lectures, we will show how the mechanical properties can mo mo match some models that do not match some models or some of his work. And I also asked him to go through that area also. So, his name is Akman Zeni, Dr. Akman Zeni. So, we had four flyer samples from different parts of power plant and analyzed the particular size and composition. And this is Cement Australia Brisbane, they were the people and they provided the flyers and it was known from Tehran power plant in Queensland in Australia. Queensland is in the middle of the country and it is quite a warm country, but it is a very nice place. Brisbane, you have heard the name Brisbane city, when India cricket team go to play that, I think Gabba is the stadium, is not it? Gabba that is Brisbane, I forgot about it, my wife reminds me. I said, I happen to be a qualified cricket umpire also from Melbourne Cricket Ground. I had passed and so I umpired in cricket during the weekends in Melbourne for 10 to 12 years. And the money they used to give me every Saturday, it helped me buying the food for the week. Okay? So I am a qualified cricket umpire. The sample size are shown in table 2. So, T59 flyers is taken from the front of her. T60 is classified flyers. T63 is ground and classified flyers of T59. And T64 is from the last of her. So, these going back to that figure 1, which shows all these things. And the particle size was determined by using Coulter light scattering particle size analyzer. And we have a center called Mark Wainwright analytical center. Professor Mark Wainwright, he was our former vice chancellor and MQAC. If you look into that, MQAC of Mark Wainwright analytical center, it is a fantastic analytical center. It has all kinds of analysis and it is the first of its kind in entire Australia. Now, some other universities have tried to set up similar centers. Okay? So, MQAC, if you look into MQAC at UNSW, you can go there. And this particle size was determined by this equipment at room temperature for one minute. Let us see what it shows. Okay. So, this was published in Fuel, the Science and Technology of Fuel Energy. It's a, it's a very good, very good journal. Very good. And good journal means they are very, they do a lot of reviewing actually. So you just send it and it, but it was good to have that. And there, I also included the names of the people from the company who provided the flyers. So if you go there here, because it would take so much time, I just put Akman Zani. I always put my students name in the front. The students are cooling, okay? And also people who help 
you know optometry, you are familiar with optometry, what is optometry? You get the eye size particle and things like that. So, he also did some, he used some equipment in the optometry division, actually particle size using different wavelength and things like that. So, it is very useful. So, even if you are working in flash, but if you do not have equipment, go and see optometry people, they may have this equipment, okay, or an analytical center. So, the <coughs> T 59 is the largest size, 100, about 106 micron, and this is the mode, mean median, and the T 60 to so, they are an order of magnitude lower, all right, but this is the mean, the mode, and this is the median. So, when you look at that, from these four different power plants, one has about ten, the size of the flyers, the first, that power plant is about ten times more than that. So, for the same weight percent, that flyers about 100 times less surface area compared to these ones, right? Because surface area is proportional to length square. So, if you have the diameter is about 10 times, so naturally the surface area for a particular weight, if you want to say 100 grams or things like that, is about. So, this can be an advantage, this can be a disadvantage, because when you are making composites, often you know that there is a critical length in composites, which if you make composites, so sometimes there may be also a critical diameter to generate more strength. So, these are very interesting areas, okay, but always there is a proper way of using the materials, all right, in different systems. Okay, if you go to the next one, particle size was determined by using this Coulter light scattering, okay, for one minute. From table 2, it is clear that T59 flash has the largest size of all particles, T60 has the next largest size, although there is a large difference between T59 and T60, like big, although it is 105 and then this is 12. So, all the, shall I turn this way, why is this, why is the sound coming up? Idhar dekha, udhar dekha, dekha andar aur bahar, dekha jag mein sab se achha cricketer, oh Sunil Gabaskar. Who, who, who will support Sunil Gavaskar? I support Sunil Gavaskar. Anyone support Sunil Gavaskar as a cricketer? No? Uh, okay. And how many of you support Sachin Tendulkar? So, sing with me. Idhar dekha, udhar dekha, dekha andar aur bahar. Sing the next one. Dekha jag mein sab se achha cricketer Sachin Tendulkar. Again, my composition given by Marshal Swati. Okay? But I have never met Sachin Tendulkar, but with Sunil Gavaskar, I had given the same song with two different names, two different, so I had sent that Sunil Gavaskar song to him in Mumbai and he was very happy and he said he played it, the Indian Cricket Association what he played it to everyone. So I have actually got that song in, in a CD, so sometimes if you can play the CD, you can listen to the, it's all studio recorded, all right? And you, I, during the breaks, I would like all of you to sing some songs also. Okay, so the one on the top, T59, T59 is the largest size, and the one which is about 10 times less, and then by contrast, average particles of T66 and T64 shows very really small difference. This indicates to get smaller size particle there is no need to do extra work like grinding. So, this is important because if you have larger particles, you get smaller surface area, sorry, lower surface area, 
But if you break them down, then you can get larger surface area. But at the same time, if you go to another power plant, and if you see that you are already getting the particle size which is 10 times larger, so a huge more surface area. So if you avoid the ball grinding, what is the advantage? That is what the manager will say. You, yes, what is the advantage if you do not have to do the grinding? Time and set and money. So that is what when you are working with the manager and, and the uh, chief, you first say, Kitna paisa lagega? Kuch paisa nahi lagega? Take a come karo. Tomorrow promotion ho gaya. Agar aapne bole de, sir, 20 karo rupiah lagega. Jao, udha jao. Hamare spit pas nahi yao. Okay? So that is what happens. But sometimes, depending on what kind of applications you are making, if you are going to use in cement and things like that, maybe the large particle size are quite all right. Okay? But that is why when we did this work, we went cement Australia, Brisbane, we said we will take flyers from your different power stations. And this is what, and that is why actually this journal, Fuel, they accepted it, this paper because we started from very fundamental aspects and we, we went to, it is very uncommon type of work. So it is better to collect flyers from the last hopper to get smaller particles, particularly in this one. So these are the particle size. I mentioned to HBTI professors, there are two professors from HBTI, and we talked to them. This is how actually you can, this scale bar is 30 micron, 30, 30, 30. And this is what I tell my researchers, that if you are comparing, when you are doing ICM and things like that, please keep the scale bar of the magnification the same. Otherwise, people will get wrong information. Samjana. So, this is how the first one says this big one, average, and then these are the. Can you see it? Go to even if I am standing here? Okay. I don't like sitting down, I, I like standing and talking. So this is how you take the scanning electron microscope picture. Now, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, many of the men of the family are scanning electron microscopy. So it is worthwhile having a friend in the material science like that, and please go and do something and learn what is so, so that then you will get an idea. Okay? Most of the time, you have to give a coating of gold or sometimes this is a, maybe aluminum, which actually makes you see the things. But if you are using very low kilo voltage, then you do not need to give a coating. Okay? But please make sure everyone that you know how to get a scanning into a microscope picture, because that is a one wonderful experience. Shape of the flyers particles. Now, flyers is irregularly spherical in shape, which allows it to flow and blend freely in the mixture. So, the top one, so this one, you will see that that's why it's spherical, beautiful spherical particles, different size. And here also they are blended together, but in general they are all spherical. Can you see spherical particles? And if spherical particles, that means they flow smoothly. It just doesn't get stopped there. So if there is a certain hole, that size of the hole is just good enough for the so it can go through there under pressure and also like there is uh, like things flow flow okay under normal things. So these are mostly these particles also spherical, but they are, they are much smaller, but they look like spherical. As shown in the figure above, only the particle shape, shape of T63 is not perfectly spherical. Okay. Because of spherical shape and hardness of fly ash, fly ash particles show ball bearing effect, which provides lubric lubricating action to fly ash when used in cement. So that means if you have spherical particles, particularly when you are using in cement, 
it just goes without any without any hindrance it goes through that now all flash particles are small in size they are effectively fill the voids except the top one the second third fourth are small particle but if you have it, in some other areas where you can actually maybe making composite materials that can be quite useful you, you have the top one if ceramic oxide and things like that you can put in any other composite materials all right even we have used some of the flies in pva anyone work with pva polyvinyl alcohol professors from hbti have you worked with pv yes pv but what we did we i'll show you some of those things also we put flies in this and it gives much better properties and things like that and also it's, it's a bio bio polymer kind of things so it can Yes, 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 yes. But if you put fly acid, it gives a better strength and toughness and the thing, and also because the particles give more rigidity also. But it's good to know that you have worked with PVA. Thank you. That is the main thing. Ah? Uh? You have worked with thermosetting composite materials. Okay, we'll, we'll come to that. I, my, my current PhD student. and another two, both of them are working with and there are several journal papers book chapters and epoxy we have worked with epoxy like like okay. okay i did work with indian jute industry research association ejira and i have done a lot of work in that area but not with fly ash but other other fillers but it's good to know that they contact from ejira was dr arup rana he is now in valsad in gujarat in a company so we'll keep on exchanging that okay because that will be very good all right electrochemical properties pva may not have very high electron conductivity so if you put fly ash it may not make much of a difference but the fact is that if you depending on the amount of carbon left in the fly ash so what we and i'll show you another slide in future where we put normal grayback fly ash in in a polymer in high high, high density polyethylene and if we put 1% fly ash you get a certain conductivity if you go to up to 20% fly ash the conductivity increases by several orders of magnitude so if you want to use fly ash in electrical such as yes you can do that also so i'll i'll go through that thank you for asking that okay yes. because in that case the ceramic properties give the strength and the other things but that loi loss on ignition which is the limit carbon which is that carbon gives the extra conductivity okay as fly ash particles are small in size they are effectively they can effectively fill the voids Col color of fly ash color or color color of fly ash generally color of fly ash is light to dark gray some studies show that the color of fly ash depends on the iron content and also the content of unburnt carbon so if you have more iron then it becomes a bit brown also if you have copper and depending on the unburnt carbon now in some cases i was surprised to see some of the research publications from american universities that unburnt carbon was about 30% whereas most of the things which we used we found the unburnt carbon is maybe 1 to 2% something like that okay so depending on that but again everything has advantage if you would like to have more electrical properties go for the one where which is high loi loi is loss on ignition okay
the reaction is like lighter the color of lyash, less is the unburnt carbon content. So if you look at it, the lighter is the color, you know that it has lesser carbon. We found from color measurement that the same order of iron content, for the same order of iron content, the loss of ignition value plays important role in de determining the whiteness of lyash. Now, whiteness is important from the point of view of vision. So even when in Sydney, so when I drive cars in the evenings, you have peach and things like that, it becomes, visibility becomes much difficult. Now, the speed limit can be 80 kilometers an hour, up to 100 kilometers of hour, and there are lots of accidents happening. But it's very difficult for people to understand that when at night the visibility is poor, particularly if it rains. When it rains, it soaks the peach, it becomes so dark. But normal people do not realize that. Okay? So, I'm trying to urge people to influence this road co and then construction in industries to use this near white and or light color fly ash so that then you can also see even in the when it becomes dark and also flies. And that visibility is very important, particularly for road industry. Okay? According to this concept, lignite or subbituminous fly ash shows light to tan buff color, and bituminous fly ash shows some gray color shade because carbon content in bituminous coal is high. So resulting in high amount of unburned carbon LOI or loss on ignition. So that is our bituminous fly ash. This is table three. So the LOI here you have come zero to fifteen percent, subbitumina zero to three percent. This is percent place as is give, gives here, and zero to five. So these two have much less carbon. So if you are going to put them in electrical applications or content, so you better prefer to go for this one with a high high carbon content. Or others, if you're using this, use more amount. So instead of one percent, you can go up to 10, 15, 20 percent, something like that. Okay? Even the, in the car industry, so when we're sitting, getting into the car, often you will get a shock. When you're, oh, yes. Why? Because there are plastics and things which do not. But if you can influence the car industries to use some of this fly ash, which can actually take the electrons away. So you will not get the... So I have a Nissan car, which I... And even sometimes when I get it, I said, oh my God. But nothing you can do about it. And but that's where you can influence the car industries, okay? And that is, will be nice. And that will be for particularly for young children and things like that. So it is good for health, okay? Other studies claim that color of fly ash varies as a function of particle size and particle shape. So there are researches which show that not only the carbon content, but also the particle size and the particle shape. Again, you may ask the question, how is it? Because if the particle size is small, then the surface area is high. So if surface area is high, that means the amount of light reflected will be much more. So that would give, that is from physics point of view. There are professors and uh, from physics. So if the surface area is more, naturally the amount of light reflected is much more. So it will look more lighter. But if you have the large particle size, surface area is less total overall for the same thing. So they, it will look dark. So that's a beautiful way of looking at it. Okay? Not just carbon, but also what light can do. Okay. This guy... Bondobadai, maybe me, proved that color flash depends on both particle size and chemical composition. So this is our study which we showed that both particle size and color and chemical composition. That means if you have lesser 
if you want to reduce the content of carbon, carbon content, then it will become much better. Now, this is the figure shows normalized intensity of all fly samples as a function of wavelength. So, this is what, what it was done in, not in our department, but in another department. And as the wavelength goes up, the normalized intensity are like that. So, they are for, the, for those four different things. I am not an electronics or optometrist thing. So, I, but these results to tell us that for the different particle size material, you actually get large difference in the normalized intensity. That, that means, if you have low particle size, you get better, better light transfer. So, these are the things. And it was so good. Again, the same journal paper which we have given. You can note down that fuel 89 to 0, 1, 0, page 399 to 404. Fuel 89 volume. 2010 publication and 399 to 404. So that was done in a different laboratory. And what, what we do in that division, when we published the paper, we included the name of that head of the department. And then when the paper was published, then we said, never. So he was very happy. I said, why do you include me? I said, because you provided all the facilities. That's why you got all these results. So how could he go without including your name? So that's the way I work, and that's the way I have good friends. All right? And I don't expect anything from them, because this use of their equipment is a big, big thing, isn't it? Flyers showing li lighter gray color shade is considered as good fl quality flyers. So this is another website which is given. Now, shortly we will make, make a mention modification of fly ash color to near white, utilizing a specially at economically visible thermal treatment and quantitatively measuring the color of fly ash. A process has been recently developed by Zeni and Bandy to modify the color of fly ash from gray black to almost near white, white with 95 whiteness of both barium sulfate and calcium carbonate. Now, if you do that, that means calcium, calcium carbonate is used in many plastics, is it right, as a filler? And it's a mineral. But if you can use this fly ash and if you can change this color to almost 95 percent white, so you can save a lot of calcium carbonate because you need to put minerals in plastics to make it strong tough. And fly ash has all those ceramic materials. Flies can do that, okay? And then this was submitted as a provisional patent and then it, in, it went to a standard patent submission. And then what happened that Cement Australia Brisbane, they had a very big financial trouble. So they couldn't go ahead with the, with the final patent. But recently other companies are asking for submitting it as, but then I got a bit bored. I thought, okay, we can do that, but to me, more important is to use it, all right? If you do pay, then, then it takes a lot of time, sometimes three to four years. And so I still have the facility, and it, it's in my hand. And if there are companies interested in it, it, it can be done. And it can be also done on site, this color change. The technique of near white and control, color control can be very beneficial for recycling fly ash in a wide range of application, including cement, concrete, mortar, cement, concrete, mortar, bricks, ceramics, as well as white plastics. Because then, as I said, even if you are using on the road surface in the pitch, you can put some amount of this near white fly ash. People will think fly ash is, is a plastic. No, it's a ceramic. So it has all the properties of those peach and things like that, but it has wonderful color. Uh, we'll show that in later slides. So that's the end of the end of this lecture. To have you any questions? The first lecture I went much longer than the conventional 45 to 50 minutes or 55 minutes. So now 
I just it's about 12, no, 11 o'clock. So we're supposed to have finished the second lecture by 10.30. So 8.30, 9.30, I came up, it's now 11 o'clock. Any questions in this one? Is it 11 or 12? What is the time? It's 12. Oh, 12. All right. So 12 is the lunch time, isn't it? Any question? So what are we trying to say here? Okay. That you can go to different power plants, or in the same company they may have different power plants. And you can see that some companies develop much more, develop much more, the flyers which has much larger size. And the same company may have flyers coming out much smaller size. So you go for those different things. And also you can see the color of the flyers depends on the size, even the same thing. So because light reflectivity for smaller particles is much more. The higher particle, because the higher particle has a much lesser surface area. So you can use that itself as it is. You can select it, all right? So you don't have to spend any money or other things, light reflect. So this is something which we found out. And then, as I say, we also went for a technique to develop the fly edge. And, but that, is, that can be expensive, but it can also be useful. You can set up in the, in the actually, companies, in the world production, you can set up a different system where you can do the same technique, utilize the same technique there. So that can become an experimental, the, not the industrial method. Okay? Yes. Well, the carbon, it can do some eff effect, carbon has some effect on the water content and water solubility. So, I think if you have lesser amount of carbon, it has lesser influence on there. But at the same time, if you have more carbon, it can make it thermally more conductivity. So that means it will not, not only electronically, electrically, but if there is a lot of heat, the carbon can take away the heat from there. So depending on what are the types of applications you need. What's your background? What's your background? I've forgotten. Civil construction. Good. Thank you. Yes. Well, if you put near white and it makes it visible much better. Concrete becomes quite dark after some time. And particularly and visibility is important, particularly if you car going car or even walking and things like that. Okay, because lots of accidents happen if people do not see the things clearly, particularly in the evenings at the road. And at the moment, I do not know in New South Wales state. Every day we hear news, we find that the trucks are uh, uh, crashing with cars. Then, yeah, and the drivers are going. They are just they cannot see the people who are walking side by road, they are just crashing on them and things. They do that, but it does not work. But road markers are limited. But if you have the whiteness of the thing, and then that white thing will reflect light, so any, it can see, help see a lot of, lot of things. Yes, yes, up to some distance, yes. Yeah, they are, they are, they are, these are four different, four different uh, coal power plant. Power plant. Yes, so it is collected from the last part. Yes. T six N. Also, they are the name. They are the names of these power plants. Also. Okay. Okay.
Okay. Thank you very much for this. Thanks, Professor Kaur.